What's happening folks? In today's video, I'm gonna give you eight things that you can do as a beginner street photographer to help you to get over those fears and anxieties that you get when shooting street photography. As an introvert and someone who has some level of social anxiety or social awkwardness, figuring out and learning ways of thinking and techniques to use that have helped me to get over those fears and to make things a little more comfortable has uh, been a big help when I've been shooting street photography. And I'm also aware that depending on the place you're in can affect those things a lot more. So if you live in a busier city, it's much easier to get past those fears. And if you live in a quiet town, it makes things much, much harder, especially if you don't, if you want to do it without people speaking to you or do it candidly, it can be harder in a small town. But anyways, the first thing to do is to get your mind right. You need to be in the right place to, to do this. So understanding your legal and your ethical positions are the first steps to being comfortable and getting rid of that fear and anxiety on the streets. And I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but I'm gonna send you to a video by Sean Tucker. I'll link it in the description. And his video on street photography, legality and ethics is excellent. It's, I could never have done it any better. It does focus on UK law. However, I believe U US law to be pretty similar and you can shoot whatever you want in a public place and nobody has rights to privacy technically. And ethically, that doesn't always mean that you should take their picture in public, but you have to come to your own ethical conclusions yourself. And with that, you need to basically have your ethical uh, constitution worked out so that you'd be comfortable explaining to someone why you took a picture or why you are taking their picture. And they can disagree, but if you're legally in the right place and ethically you understand why you're doing it, then everything should be fine. And honestly, you're probably not really gonna get confronted about it anyways. And being confident in this point will make it easier for you to work on the rest of your confidence while shooting on the streets. The first thing that I found difficult to get over was just physically getting close to people while pointing a camera at them. I could walk close to people on the street and never think twice about it. But when my intention was to try and get a picture of them or whatever they were doing or have them in a scene even, everything started to feel more awkward and I automatically felt like their eyes were on me. And that's really not the case. That was more of a psychological effect that I had. But I would say if you're going to do it, if you're starting out in street photography, start by not being too close. Look for scenes and compositions that maybe include people in them, but be a little bit further away. And gradually over time, just edge your way closer. You're always gonna be pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone as you're getting closer. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. <laughs> and the more that you do it, the more that you'll feel comfortable taking pictures in public places, whether there's people in it or not, and the more you can start to work on other things that push you further out of your comfort zone. A while ago, I was watching a video on YouTube of Gary Winogrand back in like the 80s or 70s, taking pictures in New York or maybe LA or something like that. And he's got his camera and he's going like this, like, and he's playing around with his camera, pretending he's checking his settings, and then just lifting the camera up and taking pictures as he's doing it. And I thought that was genius because you can be really close to people and pretending you're messing around with your camera and they might see you and notice you pointing the camera in their direction, but when they see you looking confused at your camera, they, they no longer feel like they're being singled out or the subject of your picture. And that can make them go back to ignoring you, put them at ease a little bit, or maybe get some sort of like eye contact in the picture where there's some tension, but you're less likely to be confronted because you also kind of have that excuse of saying like, oh, sorry, I was messing with my camera. Again, if you're confronted about it, which I've never been confronted while doing that with my camera. <laughs> and sometimes I even take it one step further. So, you know, I'll be messing around with my camera and maybe I'm still walking and trying to figure something out. And I get in front of somebody and I take a picture or like I kind of like, take the picture as I'm dodging them and I'm like, oh, sorry, and you know, move out the way and then go back to looking confused at my camera. And you know, if they do a double take, 
they're just gonna think, oh, he was not paying attention or something. I think body language, as well as your mental state, I guess it's connected, is one of the most important things you can do when you're shooting street. You know, if you're feeling nervous and your body language reflects that, people are gonna notice you. People are kind of like animals. I saw this, I think it was Matt Stewart said this in an interview, people are like animals. If you're acting out of the ordinary or acting weird or nervous like you're up to something, people will pick up on that much quicker. They have this kind of like radar about it. Whereas if you're just walking down the street like everybody else, but you just happen to also be taking pictures of things and you know that it's perfectly legal to be taking these pictures and you're comfortable with your ethical position of taking them, your body language can also reflect that. So, you know, keep your chin up, your shoulders back, open posture, don't scurry around and like run away from things if you're noticed and people will not generally react badly at all. And I think especially if you're caught, you know, if you're, if you're taking a picture and someone looks around at you, the worst thing you can do is run, is like scurry off and run away. But the best thing you can do is nod or smile or give them a thumbs up and then walk off casually as if that wasn't a big deal. And most of the time, nobody will bother you. This is kind of a strange one, but if you don't directly look at someone, even though your camera was pointing at them and you were sort of purposely including them in a picture, it throws them off again. So, you know, you've you've just, you, maybe you start by looking past them, look at something slightly above them or to the side, and then raise up your camera, take your picture, and then keep looking above and walk off slowly. And people will kind of, it might throw them off, like, was I in that picture? But, you know, if they don't feel like they're the focus of it, they were just in it, they're not likely to try and confront you about it, especially if there's a chance that they think they're going to be wrong about it. If they're not sure, they're not going to jump out at you and, and ask what you were doing. A lot of the time, you'll probably even find that they look behind them to see what it was, and then just go back to what they were doing. And I know a lot of these techniques sound a little bit sneaky, but that, I mean, it's kind of the point is to keep things candid, and especially if you don't want to be chatting to people and having all these interactions, like throw, throwing off the, the f attention or focus is, uh, is the best way to do that and to not bruise the scene, as Joel Myrowitz said. Whenever I'm out shooting with friends, I like to, if we, when we see maybe a scene happening, sometimes there's three of us and three photographers is far more noticeable than one, but I'll purposely talk about a scene. If we're, especially if we're close to people and they're gonna be in that scene, I'll mention this thing, you know, if it's an art installation or just something like a colorful storefront or something, just talk about what it is. Like, like oh, like, look, that's, what is this new construction? haven't seen this before, I wonder what they're building. Take a picture of it. And like all the while, people don't really realize that you're framing up something with them in it to include them as part of that scene. Then it's it's like a kind of handy technique and they just kind of, they'll go back to what they're doing. I've never had a bad reaction from that at all. Maybe one's of slight confusion because I'm taking a picture when they're in front of me in the scene, but then you can carry on and take another picture further over and it makes them feel like they were not really the subject of it. This even happened recently, walking up to some like storefront, it used to be a radio shack, and they turned it into some art installation that maybe displayed other, like multiple people's art, but it was like candy colored storefront. And there was a construction worker looking at it, drinking coffee, and I walked up to it, talking about it to my friend and took a picture of it whilst also including them in the corner. And I even have a picture of them sort of finishing drinking their coffee and looking around like right at me. And I continued to talk about what was going on in the in the windows and they, they never said a thing. They were, they just figured that's what, that's what I was paying attention to. Probably my most used technique is to just keep the camera up at my eye or to keep looking at the camera and pointing it in the same direction even after the people have left the scene that you're photographing. And I think the easiest way to start this is to find a scene and let your subject come to you. So I've done this on intersections quite a lot. I'll just post myself up somewhere and wait for people and subjects to pass through and occasionally in interesting things will happen. And you know, you can pretend you're taking a picture down the street or of something across the road and just leave your camera at your eye 
let them come through, take some pictures as they're passing through, and keep your uh, keep your camera there until they've gone. You know, even if you thought they were suspicious of you, you could just take another picture of the scene again and continue to look in that direction. And people will just walk right through and not really think that it had anything to do with them. You can even do this when you're walking. You see people at the side of the street or people you're walking towards. I've done this going through crowds before and just walk towards people and again, pretend I've been checking my camera and do that. And as I walk past them, take pictures and keep my camera up at my eye until they're well past me and then I can drop the camera. And it throws people off enough to think that you were not really paying attention to them. And it's not to say that when I've been doing these techniques, it always turns out to be good photos, but all the good photos that I have eventually got have been a result of continuing to use these techniques. Especially when you're working up to getting really close to people where you have no excuse for anything else than yes, I was taking your picture and this is why. Be smart about who you choose. I tend to not choose anyone who looks like they might stab me in public because, I mean, that seems like common sense. I, one time, I desperately wanted to take someone's picture. I was a bit too shy to ask them. I was walking my dog anyways, but the guy was rollerblading through old Colorado City with several machetes like swinging off of his belt. And he was also like twirling in one hand, uh, like a fillet knife for fishing. And this guy looked interesting and maybe a little bit eccentric and a bit intimidating because of all of the knives that he was holding. So I did not say anything and I did not ask to take his picture and I did not sneakily try and take his picture because I thought that seemed like someone who might try to stab me. So I just avoided that confrontation. It might have been fine. Sometimes people like that turn out to be the nicest people who are happy to let you take their picture. But in that situation, I was uncomfortable with trying, so I did not. Generally, when I look at people, I'll make a snap judgment and decide if they're gonna stab me or not. And that's kind of the barometer that I use for it. One problem with this is that that means that often I only photograph a certain subsection of the population of Colorado. And I just kind of have to come to terms with that for now. And maybe as I get better, as I get more confident, I can start to include more intimidating people and have more of a conversation with them before or after it. Once in a while, you'll see something and you won't have a technique or way of getting that photo without just being bold and going for it. I have lunged in front of people who I wanted to get a picture of and just hoped for the best that it would work out. And it generally, it has worked out. It doesn't always work out to be a great picture, but there are pictures that I'm proud of, that I'm happy with, that have been a result of that. That pressure, the first time I did it, was horrible and crippling. And the more I've done it, it's still, very awkward and feels horrible. But after doing it once, you kind of get that feeling that people don't care as much as you think they care. And it helps to sort of loosen you up to continue doing that. And if you're interested in seeing me using these tips in real world circumstances, go ahead and subscribe. I post POV videos and most pictures I take use some variation of one of these techniques. And ultimately, one final bonus tip is the more practice you put into it, the more you will get out of it and the more comfortable you will get at doing it. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's any techniques that you use that I haven't mentioned here. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.